Hello everyone and welcome back to yet another Boston Blue Beat. In commemoration of First Limit ending, we will be running off-season team exhibitions for all three of the main Boston Blue Beat games this week. And tonight, we will be starting off this week strong with a Massachusetts versus Texas 5v5. I'm Salte Boy and I will be guiding you all tonight on the mic as a representative of Texas. And joining us will also be Ben Pai representing Massachusetts. Ben Pai, how are we doing tonight? Uh, doing pretty good. Uh, everybody who's tuned into a Boston Blue Boot has probably seen me on the mic at some point uh, throughout Burst Limit or even just some um, online monthly. So, uh, yeah, I'll be uh, the bias for the Boston side, naturally. And, uh, yeah, we got a sick 5v5 crew battle coming up here that I'm really excited to watch. Yeah, this is going to be a really fun one. Lots of strong players. I mean, not just in their own respective regions, but in the nation as a whole. I mean, we got players like Javon. We got players like Chiksama, Swirly Glasses, Toedo, Ryder. This is going to be a good one. And a lot of character variety as well, especially on the Massachusetts side. I know Aerodat is playing the Ragna. <clears throat> we got Richter on the Bang, Toedo on the Bullet, Spooky. Arcune, Ryder, Azrael, and on the Texas side, a little bit less variety, but still a good <laughs> amount. We got Zen on the Ragna, Javon on the S, Killer Kitty on the S, Chigzama on the Hazama, and Swirly Glasses on the 9. So it's going to be a lot of character variety all around. I'm really interested to see how these players interact with each other as we go on tonight. Yeah, so yeah, uh, a lot of interesting matchups. I'm sure we'll see. Um, I know you said, um, I pr presumably everyone will just be playing their main, but I know Richter does have a Noel who likes to pull out sometimes, and Spooky has a very good, a strong Hakuman as a, an option. He's uh, not feeling Arakune for whatever reason. Yeah, I like how you pointed out the pockets as well. I know that Toedo plays a bit of Naoto on the side as well, and then on the Texas side, we have Javon having a new 13 pocket. Some will say that's not a real pocket, but Javon <laughs> believes in the character. I know that will be an important counter pick depending on how this team format plays out tonight. Javon also plays other characters that I'm not too sure he will actually bring out because they're not quite tournament ready or at least like as high level as his first two characters, but he does have a platinum and a Jubei in the pocket. Killer Kitty on the other hand also pockets a bit of uh, also pockets a few characters as well. In addition to the S, we have new 13 and 9. And for the rest of the players, I think they just solo main through. Uh, <laughs> they just solo main all the way. So yeah, yeah. Uh, this will be really interesting to see how these players use their pockets or their mains to counter pick and kind of, I guess, I don't know, turn the advantage in their favor if things don't go quite their way because each set will be a first two. Oh, I didn't know that. But um, yeah, actually, when you had brought it up, I forgot and wonder if Toledo is going to just stick with Naoto because he's been on that Naoto grind for quite a while now. And I want to say it's like as a, he, he wants to get to a point where it's a more permanent switch. Uh, maybe I'm wrong about that, but I think that is what he was going for. So I wonder if he's going to stick with Naoto or kind of just, uh, you know, feel out, you know, a match or two. Uh, with bullet the po the pocket bullet or not the pocket but the original main and Toedo definitely shows he can make her work uh, no matter the matchup I've seen him uh, you know blow up plenty of characters where people are like oh bullet doesn't like this matchup at all yeah it is a bit of future proofing in that sense where Naoto is just a much better character than bullet when especially when it comes to that matchup spread though Toedo has played Bullet for the longest time, really good with that character. I know that, you know, people normally don't like playing against Bullet even if the matchup is bad for the character, but I know we have some players on the Texas <laughs> team who particularly despise Bullet. I know that Javon is one of those players, Swirly Glasses is one of those players, and one really interesting thing too is that if Toledo plays against either of those two players, it's going to be a bit of a run back uh, from CO Talk 2023 because Toledo actually beat both Javon and Swirly Glasses on the loser side and winner's side, respectively. So I'm really interested to see how that run back will end up turning out because I know that these players definitely want that run back. They want to prove themselves that they can beat the bullet. And this is kind of going tying back into how I talked about Javon with the new 13 pocket 
where New 13 actually might be an effective counter pick in terms of Toledo's bullet if he does choose to stick with that character because I remember that Toledo said before that he's not really confident in the New 13 matchup um, like choosing the bullet into New 13. So that might be a situation where Naoto comes out or Toledo just sticks with his guns. Yeah. Uh, I was there for those talking matches. Incredibly hype. Um, and... Yeah, I think as like as for his bullets, like uh, it's like not a matchup you really think fondly in bullet, but Toledo proved he can make it ha happen, and um, definitely like it, one of the, well, I think one of the, if not the uh, top player to kind of look out for, I think for uh, Texas uh, on our team. Not to say anybody on our side <laughs> is a slacker here, especially uh, Spooky. Spooky had incredibly strong Arakune which you'll see plenty of and Arakune is such a uh, like <laughs> another character I feel like people do not want to deal with such a uh, like volatile character can immediately put you in like a really bad situation just off any touch and if you don't have the resource like burst or something to get him off you immediately uh, <laughs> you, you, have, you have a lot to deal with yeah for sure but it's also about getting that right touch, you know what I mean? Because like, yes, Arakuna can get cursed off of any good hit, but at the same time, if Arakuna can't get that good hit, then he's just going to have a huge struggle trying to make anything work, especially against the characters that we have Texas representing. I mean, we have S. I mean, you don't really need to talk about that all that much. We got Nine, Hazama, Ragna, and I think what's most important about all these characters across the board, except Ragna, is that they're all really strong zoners. And while Arakune, when you normally think of how he likes to play the game, you think, oh, he likes to zone them out until he finds that good hit. But Arakune, while he does have some zoning tools, it pales in comparison to actual zoners. And when you think of S, you think of B Fireball, right? Extremely powerful and really just shuts down whatever Arakune would want to do when it comes to zoning. Nine, for example, huge normals, huge specials. And Hazama, you know, you got the chains, right? So... Spooky is definitely going to have a hard time in terms of matchup, uh, in, in terms of in terms of character matchup, uh, when tackling those sets in particular. Yeah, uh, obviously very doable. Um, <laughs> with the one touch magic of curse, you know any matchup, Arakune can <laughs> theoretically win. Um, but yeah, pretty harsh against um, pretty harsh against Arakune there. For some of these matchups, um, and yeah, we, oh, we got like Ragnar, Bang, like Bang. I think Bang uh, does pretty well against most of the characters presented on the Texas side here. Uh, another kind of like, crazy character, like each player plays that character, <laughs> like almost with their own spin. I feel like you never see like the same style or like play style with Bang. Uh, you know, some of them like to nut out a bit. I think. But uh, it kind of fits the character style. Like you do, just kind of have to put that that fast pressure on the opponent, uh, so they don't know what's happening. And you know, you get like one or two good hits. Bang actually does like you know a lot of damage. So uh, and managing the nail resource uh, will be pretty important. Yeah, and I'm really interested to see how players, how the players on the Texas side deal with that bang. Because while we do have of uh, a bang player in texas they're not exactly on the top level similar to Richter, and um so they also don't exactly have the most experience tackling that kind of character um and also bang is also a bit of a gimmicky gimmicky character as well so if you struggle with that layer one offense that he's putting on top of you you're going to have a really really tough time playing against playing against that character yeah so maybe some uh some lack of mac matchup uh, experience you can uh give boston the upper hand here yeah but i'll say that the matchup experience in t uh for from texas to massachusetts shouldn't be too bad you know i did t talk about bang being a standout uh bullet obviously is a standout as well we have no bullet players in texas nor do we have any nato players in Texas, but the rest of the characters we do have covered. We do have some strong Ragnas, Arakunes, Noels, and Azrael's, and even Hawkman's as well. So 
they should be fine on that front. On the other hand, we have Texas. I'm sure that Massachusetts has no qualms with playing against any of these characters <laughs> when it comes to character knowledge, because these are very popular characters, Zama and S especially. Uh, Ragna being another po very popular character. And Nine, while maybe not as popular, does uh, come into play quite often with players like Lucy, Swirly Glasses, Julio C. Rivera showing up to majors. And I'm sure that they play against those players a lot. Yeah. Um, locally, we do have, um, well, we got Ragna. Aerodat is that Ragna we usually get to play against. Um, uh, nine, we do got a nine. Um, and who else? What was that? Oh, S. We, we, we actually surprisingly don't have many. We, we, I think we have one S, but they don't show up to locals as much as they used to, so um maybe a little shy in that experience i mean obviously if you go out like anybody who's traveled to a major i'm sure there's there's plenty of s's especially strong s's that uh you get the uh the matchup experience and so and some of the boston people in this travel a lot <laughs> oh yeah for sure i mean think monarch right monarch yeah. one of the strongest s players even if they play lambda as well he kind of like plays both uh, both of those characters in tandem and very strong with both of them as well uh, i really find it funny that you say that there's not a lot of s players in massachusetts but in texas austin alone like not even the entire state austin alone has four s players <laughs> so we are completely stacked on that on that end we also have a lot of nine players as well s and nine is like the meme around texas because everyone plays those characters it seems um, but we have a good representation, good spread across all the major cities for Texas. We have Javon and Swirly holding up Austin. We've got Chickzama and Zen holding up the Dallas Fort, Dallas Fort Worth area. And we have Killer Kitty representing Houston. So most of the major cities, uh, minus San Antonio, being uh, shown at play here. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's surprising just because, you know, S a very strong and for sure pretty so at least simple to get the groundwork for like uh some of the optimal stuff a little more tricky but uh very basic game plan uh and really it has like very simple combos if you just want to have those to like run that simple game plan mm -hmm. but i just got the message we should be starting soon whenever the players kind of get in the lobby here uh our first match coming up is gonna be uh aerodat and Chicksama. Okay, this is gonna be really interesting. We're uh, using both these players as the, each team's point. Um, if you don't know exactly how this team format is going to run, I'm gonna give you the lowdown real quick. So both, uh, so for this exhibition, both teams will be starting off with a blind pick. So they don't know that. So Texas doesn't know that Airdat is starting. Uh, Massachusetts doesn't know that Chikzama is starting off. So it will be a completely blind pick for the very first match. But from then on, it will be a first of two for every set. And the winner will stay on. After the winner stays on, the team that lost gets the counter pick into that player. And we kind of just go through the go through the hoops one after another until each member on the team has been exhausted. Um, and yeah, and every team member has one life as well. So once the first two set is over, say that Aerodat beats Chikzama right here, then Chikzama cannot play anymore. And uh, Massachusetts is up one member. Well, I uh, did not realize it was, uh, was kind of like a blind pick. I hope no one hurt me on the mic here. Uh, none of the players watching. Uh, that didn't happen. I was lying. Oh, see? <laughs> I, I was lying. Ryder came in the, the lobby instead. I don't know, maybe Ryder, Ryder, maybe Ryder's just hanging out in the lobby. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, because it is a first of two, this will provide some opportunities for adjustments and also provide some opportunities for character swaps. Like we were talking with the pockets, these players are not character locked. So they can stick with their mains if they want, or they can switch characters if they're uh, if it's not going well for them. Just know that it is important that they win their first of two or they are out of the team tournament. Right now, we are just waiting on Aerodat to join the room, and then we'll get started. Yeah, so our first match here, um, Ragnar versus Hazama. Um, pretty, um, 
I don't know. I feel like I feel like I see this matchup a lot just because of uh, like the, our online tournaments usually get like uh, Play Guy and Bazama uh, and you know plenty of Hazamas uh, on Netplay. So uh, a lot of them run into each other in bracket, and uh, this is like a I don't know pretty. I feel like one sided. I mean, not one sided. It's uh, it's like uh, it's all about sniping Hazma out of the air, right? Like they're gonna want to be zipping around with the chains, and Ragna kind of has like good tools to do that. I think with five A being a good way to check Hazma's air approach, along with six A and even J A, like all his A buttons, very good at like pretty safely checking like uh, air movement. Um, and Hazma, it's kind of about <laughs> making sure Ragna doesn't get in on you, because if he starts getting that pressure going, Hazma. No meter or yeah, no meterless reversal options outside of EA, which caused the burst. Um, but you know, has like pretty good damage, so like it just needs like a couple good hits in neutral, and then you know, has have his own game plan run. I think it's a better matchup for Hosmo if he just kind of tries to stay back a bit. Yeah, for sure. You definitely want to play lame if you're playing Hazama, right? That's that's usually how uh, people play. Will usually play this character. You know, just stand, stay back, toss out the chains. Oh, am I coming in? And no, I'm not coming in. And then when they want to come in, they come in on their own terms, right? So Hazama will be controlling the pace of this match most definitely, and Ragna will be the one on the offensive trying to make sure that Hazama does not get any huge lead because of that. But it looks like we have our players redding up right now. Yeah, there's the Ragna, there's the Hazama, and looks like we're going to be getting into this one soon. Yeah, no surprises yet. Both or both players picking the characters we expected them, them to. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty interested to see how this one goes. Uh, a good, I think a very good opening uh, match to start here. Yeah, for sure. A lot of these matches are going to be really good tonight. I'm excited. We love Blaze Blue in this whole in this household, in this online space, um, and this will be a good one. Two of some of the strongest regions in the nation duking it out against each other, and we're getting right into the swing of things. We're letting the stage intro play out. I see you. This is a really cool stage, by the way. I really love this one. Yeah, God bless Rollback for not needing us to use like the same one or two stages for netplay to be stable sure looks like we're getting into our first match of the night and we're immediately backing off like i said before chikzama is the one that controls the pace of this match playing lane shooting out the chain in the moment that chikzama confirmed a hit going right in and getting a simple confirm off air that another good confirm in air that really struggling to check his, uh to check chikzama on uh on their approach options yeah and chikzama getting a lot of miles there just like the uh the jump back um J four D or whatever that is, just to kind of check Aerodat trying to like run forward or anything. Uh, but now Aerodat finding a hit, kind of getting some some pressure going here. He's got Chikazama in the corner. He just needs to keep them here. And that's exactly what Ragnar wants, but slipping out back to neutral. It's not where you want to see uh, Hazama be if you're Ragnar. Hazama, a very slippery character, can get, out of these, uh, can get out of these pressure sequences rather easily against Ragnar. We're going DPRC right there, but Chikzama ready to block that one. And now you have to be ready to block all of this. Chikzama really utilizing those vertical chains coming down and being very ambiguous whether it's going to be a left or a right. One of Hazama's strongest mix-up options along with her powerful strike throw because of the existence of 5B, which is plus four, so can really implement very strong stagger strike throw pressure. Oh my god, the, the like instant block barrier on that like fuzzy jump into immediate math. Take out that or take that round. Okay, we're going confirmed straight into the OD combo, getting as much damage as we can from the round start. Going to push Chikzama into the corner, but couldn't keep Chikzama there. Nice tech on that air throw, but Aerodat is going to restart the process all over again. Chikzama is roaming free once again. And Aerodat still kind of trying to push into the corner, but not quite. Now Aerodat finds himself in the corner here. Chikzama's nice combo, trying to get a reset there. Now just trying to escape. No confirmed by Aerodat. Be feeling a bit of those nerves. Okay, 
centimeter keep the pressure going here. Really pushing to Dama to the corner, no confirm on that counter hit 5C. Could have been a lot of damage. Swap size right here has a full meter, so can really make this hurt. Drops the confirm, but it's okay because Shikisama's gonna go back to that full screen space and once again control the pace of the match so effectively. OD on the on the overhead elbow. This could be big for Air Dot. Can we kill here? I'm not quite sure. Uh, two way starter seems a little too prorated, but puts himself yeah. in a pretty good spot. But a quick rise to a mash Wait, here. Yeah, this is gonna hurt, but... Oh, wait, no, can't quite do the double secret from that, uh, from that combo right there. It's okay, though, because now Ragna's in the corner, and there, there it is. Chikzama backing <laughs> up, not letting Aerodad get close, and there's the air throw. It was going to come at some point. Hazamas love to air throw you like that, and you have to be ready when it does happen. Aerodad did get some nice air throw text before in the set, but, uh... Chikzama can just sneak that by when you're not being careful. And that is the first game going to Chikzama right there. Yeah, Aerodat um, doing pretty good. Kind of let Chikzama slip out a little uh, too much. And I think um, just uh, cleaned up a couple confirms there. He definitely could have had um, at least a round. But let's see how he adjusts or, uh, you know, if he's warming up those hands or something. Got our early DP showing here. We're still kind of in the mid screen. Chicks on will find another hit. Go for reset. Doesn't work out. Great air confirmed though by uh, Aerodat on the uh, the stance uh, mix up check. Trying to catch Chigzama, but Chigzama being a bit too slippery. Going to give Aerodat the turn right there. A, a, a bit of an unfortunate whiff. Nice protect on that air throw. What's it going to be? Overhead! The OD on the overhead, but no punish. That was a bit of a late OD, but it's okay because now it is your turn. And we're going to keep this offense going. DP in your face after the OD. No, you're not allowed to have that. Not at all. Another tech on the air throw. Aerodat is not going to let that happen again. Never again. Ooh, okay. Nice and firm on the uh, counter hit to Bossy here. Full damage, push to the corner. He's actually spending the meter here. I guess that's packs onto some damage, and yeah, you end up right back at like the neutral here. Don't need to go in. I say that as they're going, but counter assault to get back to mid screen. Aerodad just trying to get some momentum going in his favor, but just having trouble finding it here. One touch away from death, spends the OD to try to make something happen. But doesn't work out. Chikzama going up around and about to win the first set here of the night. Yeah, I don't think Chikzama is really too worried about approaching in that final in that final part of that of, of that round because Chikzama was so close to getting burst, so close to getting overdrive that even if Aerodat did touch Chikzama, Chikzama could still have won of that round. Um, so yeah, Chikzama is just putting on this pressure right now and maybe looking to take a perfect Aerodat yet to get a single hit, no DP coming out, and Chikzama might be able to kill right here. Has the meter, has the OD available. Tech on the air throw, Chikzama. Getting a lit, bit, little bit too cheeky. Ooh, really big interrupt there. Drops the combo, tried to go for the optimal, but doesn't work. Has to keep the pressure tight here. Forced to spend the burst just to keep the exam on the corner and not lose. And there it is. One last up back chain. And Aerodat, or Chitama, going uh, up that first game 2 0 for the Texas side. Uh, in the 5v5 here. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that does mean that Aerodat is out of the team tournament. And Chikzama stays alive as Chikzama will be staying on. And we'll be seeing who exactly Massachusetts picks to counter pick right into Chikzama. That max was a bit of the... Uh... Honestly, that was a bit of like the clash of TOs, right? Because Aerodat has, I know, run some tournaments before. I know Aerodat ran uh, the CO side bracket, actually, back uh, last year. And, uh, you know, he we have Chigzama here, big TO over in Dallas, and also ran the EVO community tournament last year and is currently running World Serpent Championships. So it's safe to say that Chigzama has their, uh, has, has their work cut out for them and might be a a little busy maybe maybe not exactly grinding the game as much so maybe you could take a bit of advantage for that but Chikzama still winning that first game in a very strong fashion yeah yeah i know uh, erudat's been doing i think a lot over um 
at, I think at his his college or wherever he's um wherever he goes to school there. Uh, just been getting people a little more, uh, getting that scene kind of cultivated around there a little more. And he's come out uh comes out to our events whenever he can. It's always a joy to have him. Um, very strong, very young player. Like, uh, and plays plenty of games too. Like, he's not just a BB head. He uh, is in Strive. I've seen him play some Grand Blue. So, he uh, he kind of he he'll, he'll dabble in anything. Yeah, that's really cool to see. Just spreading their wings and uh, you know playing a bunch of different games, supporting the community. That's what it's all about, right? And uh, I think both of the teams and all the players on them are really emblematic of that, right? Oh, Ryder. Oh, Listen interesting. Ryder. <laughs> I'm, okay, interesting. So we're counterpicking Ryder into Chikzama. So Ryder plays Azrael, and maybe they think that Ryder has the edge against Chikzama, maybe in the player matchup, maybe in the character matchup. No, we are switching to the Taukaka. Wait, actually. Uh, you might, I think he's just checking buttons. Okay, that, you might You might be. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. I don't think Ryder has a Taukaka. <laughs> when I think of Ryder, I think of like, I, I think of like the, um, how how do I word it? Like the very aggressive rushdown character. I know that Ryder plays a Sarugi over in uh, Undernight. If you know how Sarugi plays, then you know that Azrael is the perfect character for him. Yeah, the ultimate mix-up on character select is going down to the buttons and either hovering the random, so you just get like you stop on a random character or hit like tower or someone and it's like, wait, no. <laughs> Getting right into this, immediately backing off and getting rewarded for it, just throwing out a chain there. Catching Ryder, trying to be a bit aggressive with an air dash in. Now with the barrier, already trying to uh, push Ryder out. It's a nice little air. Oh, I dropped. Very tricky Ryder, trying to catch Shikzama with their big air buttons, and Shikzama just content with bursting right there. They know they can easily zone out Ryder if they want. So just spending that burst early, you know, is uh, is a good choice because now Ryder has to approach right back in, tries to backdash, but gets caught out anyways, trying to whiff punish Shikzama. Yeah, and Ryder, you can see him, he is trying, uh, he, he's six days and stuff, he's definitely expecting kind of like uh, Shikzama to approach in some way and to stuff it with that, uh, like chasing down the chain there. Uh, he's swinging around like a lot of JBs to try and meet anti or air to air, I should say. But nothing quite working. Like, no, hanging on by a pixel. But goes down here. Keeping his burst, though. Going into this next round with a, with a full burst gauge. Yeah, Ryder almost given another chance at life right there. Chigzama, like, one, one meter off from uh, being able to get that full screen super at the end to kill right there. But now we're going back into the swing of things, into round two of game number one. There's the air throw coming out. Ryder, unlike Aerodat, not ready to tech these ones. And Ryder is going to be in this full combo as he gets sent into the corner. Ryder really struggling to get any real advantage in the set so far as Chigzama is just fooling Ryder in the corner with these plus on block normals. There's another air throw. There's another air throw. Ryder, please. You gotta tech these. There we go. There we go. <laughs> Eventually the happens. <laughs> oh, and the one growler almost catching a chain there, but not quite enough. And Chigzama really looking to end this on a perfect again. There it is. Ryder really just couldn't get anything going that game. Still has still has a game, at least a game to make it up or um, you know try some different things here. But all right, that was pretty brutal. Chigzama took that pretty convincingly. Yeah, for sure. I know that Azrael kind of struggles with the with a bit of the same problems that Ragnar does, where they don't have the best approach options to really check Hazama or approach Hazama in neutral. And we did see a bit of thinking from Ryder, where Ryder actually tried to go for Growler to beat those chains because chains count as a projectile, so that will be immune to them. But unfortunately, Ryder was a little too late, and also the chains didn't quite reach, which is which is another important thing because Chigzama, while using chains, doesn't even need to hit you with the chains to make them count. Even if Chigzama whiffs them, they can use those chains to approach or back up if needed, and it becomes a really tricky character to deal with because of that. Yeah. So uh, let's see. It'll, uh, I think I assume Ryder went to characters like there. Took a minute. I like that maybe reflected a little bit or just gave himself some time to cool down uh you know Hazuma Hazuma is a pretty uh overwhelming character if you aren't sure what's uh, happening there right you're just getting poked by chains 
um, a lot of scans from the attachment. Alright, they're already getting some good good here. Chikazama catching the back dash there with the air dash JB on Waco. Bringing Ryder all the way to the corner here. And I think that was a one would be. Yeah, that might have been the case. Oh, we're going to base <laughs> Ryder right there. Chikazama might. Yeah, we'll definitely be. Oh, yeah, no, that, 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 that's dead. And doesn't even need to spend any meter to make sure it kills us. Chikazama is on set point once again. Chikazama is just blowing through Massachusetts right now. How does it feel, Ben Bai, that Texas is <laughs> on y'all right now? You know, it's 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 really on me, right? I, I used to play Hazumo, um, and I just haven't been given the same enough experience here. <laughs> oh, that was that was messed up. That was messed up. The reset in the overhead. We're bringing him back to the corner though. Oh, and spending the meter again. Might as well kind of put, you know, at a decent advantage and, you know, maybe play this lane zone here. Oh, okay. Here we go. This is what we want to see. Get something going. Yeah, Ryder actually getting the first big combo right here, and Azrael's a very snowball character. A A A A A. Oh, style on the very end. If it's nothing okay. else, wait. I think Chikzama might be able to kill here. Not if we drop. There's the super coming out. The Blackhawk Stinger O D on it, and that will be enough to kill with the E A to finish things off. That actually wasn't Blackhawk Stinger. That was his other super. But I'm so used to Azrael seeing that super flash. I'm like, oh, Blackhawk Stinger coming out. <laughs> but uh, no, Chikzama. Very convincingly. It starts to look a bit scary at the end right there as Ryder was looking to stage a comeback with that very strong OD. A very smart OD too because Hazama, very strong strike throw pressure like I said before. And using OD on that to bait out the throw was really smart and gave away for a free punish like that. But uh, Chikzama holding it down and takes out two of the members of the Massachusetts team as we'll see who exactly we counter pick into Chikzama next. Yeah. So, uh, Asriel, not quite, <laughs> I, I guess, the answer there. Um, though, I don't know. I think um, the matchup is a little rough maybe for Asriel because obviously the chain oh, there he is. game. Yeah, but... It's um, coming out. <laughs> it's oh, coming wow. out eventually. They already picked out Toledo. <laughs> we, we, we upped that real quick. Yeah, and like you said before, Toledo going to be playing the Nauta this time. And, you know, even if... Toledo might be stronger on the bullet, or if Toledo is trying to solo main Naoto, uh, Naoto in general is just a much better matchup going into Hazama than if we were to play bullet versus Hazama, right? Yeah, like infinitely better. Maybe not infinitely better. I feel like JD could uh, harass Hazama or be very annoying for Hazama depending on the circumstance, but Naoto overall much more consistent, like um, overall like normal dash helps uh, having uh, and having a normal dash helps a lot I think in this matchup uh, really good air to air buttons that like JC uh, with tons of untech time you can find the counter hit and stuff even something like sway to kind of just like uh, navigate chain sometimes yeah, all those tools really come together to make this a much better matchup for Naoto going to the Sazama matchup. And also, he's just a much faster character, has a lot more tools to get in and stay in. And we're already seeing usage of that DP, a very strong DP, because it launches Naoto so far forward. And this makes it really effective if Chikzama gets a little too early, which might have out the defense Okay, it's been the OD here early, but does make Shikazama perspective. And now Toledo just going and making sure to stick on top of Hazama here. Yeah, Naoto's entire game plan is to get in and stay in. Kind of like an insect, right? <laughs> just wants to stay in your face at all times. Like Velcro, just attach to you and not letting up as Toledo oh, might be able to finish here. No, not quite. Chikazama staying alive. But not oh. <laughs> for long. Toledo jumping back, hitting that overhead, hitting that jump in, and able to close out that round as Team Massachusetts, I believe, takes their very first round against Texas. Yeah, uh, make, making a sweat a little bit though with that drop. But uh, let's see, going to the second game here, finally got a game on the board for um, Massachusetts, and I like that. A little short combo there, like the overhead reset, and Chigzama. Chigzama, very confident in the matches they, uh, they send out. Now, how's my 2 way doing so much work? Uh, we got some, a little bit of a strength in the here, but, but the, the run. 
And there's the Hoshi Ten Jin confirmed. Not gonna be a whole ton of damage because it'll be pretty heavily scaled. Uh, but it's okay. We're gonna go for the drop into the reset. That's an American reset, y'all. The Texas reset up high, down low. I'm gonna steal a bit of life along with that as well because that OD does come with a life steal ring that uh, basically gives Chigzama some health back. Um, and also, another big thing too is that um, it rapidly recharges the chains. So it makes Chigzama much scarier in a neutral and in pressure. Yeah, we don't spend the burst. I wonder if it was supposed to be an OD, but we're still counting in hit stun. Either way, kind of going this the rest of this round with no burst now. So I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to make that burst count. Um, would to drop the combo there? It would have put him in the corner now. Find himself in the corner. Great DP there on the uh, IB between pressure, but the the Chick Zama 2A mash is unstoppable right now. Attention up high, down low, onto the ground you go as we charge all our chains. Get tossed out of the corner, interestingly enough. That does, uh, that does like throw Kawido out of the corner, but it looks like Chikzama has bigger plans straight into the super right here. Will this be enough to kill? Yes, Ooh. it will. 4k damage doing just enough to kill Kawido right there. And Chikzama hasn't dropped a game yet. That was the only round that Chikzama <laughs> lost. And, uh... Kawito once again on the back foot. Team Massachusetts once again on the back foot. Is this going to be a Chikzama sweep? This is getting real, real scary right now. And we're sticking to our guns. We're sticking to the Naoto. The, the 5-0 cannot be imminent. We got we to gotta, we gotta show New England ain't free. All right, so Chikzama starting off very aggressive here. And that 2-C two, uh, two anti-air... Nice confirm. Oh, oh that's God. deadly. This is, that is deadly. This is just tragic. Into the throw reset. Okay, we're getting a bit too nasty. We're feeling ourselves right now. The Super. momentum is unstoppable right now. We so we do need to find a way to kind of slow this down right now. One more pixel, one more <laughs> chance. No, it's not gonna come into fruition. Chikzama on set point. Just needs to win this one round here, and Toledo is out of the picture. And this is the big player that Texas was fearing the most. And Chikzama is just eating through Toledo like he's nothing. This is not a good look for Massachusetts so far. We cannot have the imminent 5 0 Texas <laughs> being Massachusetts. That'd be scary. That would be. I, I don't know, that'd, be, that'd just be a way to end the night, right? Like That'd be good for me, you know? <laughs> I'm biased. Yeah, I was gonna say, you'd be, yeah, you'd be like, snickering like, ha <laughs> yes, of course. Like, no one's my, better like, than Texas. Like, my only negative will be like, wait, will Zen even be able to play the game? Will, <laughs> will Javon be able to play the game? I, I can't root for the other homeboys. Because one, just, just, one just took them all out. <laughs> we got Toledo, one more combo from Death. OD being spent. Oh, but the yeah. burst comes out. Can't block that one. Chigzama, however, 2A match. Like you've been talking about before. Chigzama with those 2A mashes. Is just doing so much work. And doing so much work to bring Chigzama to three game wins. No way. Chigzama 3-0 on Massachusetts so far. Who are they going to send next? Who are they going to send in next? We're low on the reserve here. This, the Hazma 2A has, is actually single-handedly killing Boston. <laughs> this this whole stream has just been Hazma 2A doing the most work I think I've ever seen it do. It's a really good button, mind you. Yeah, it's it's like the fastest crouching jab, in, or at least one of the the one of the fastest crouching jabs in the game. Yeah, Not, six frame startup. Yeah, six frame. Uh, most are either seven or longer, depending on like other properties it might have. But it, it, it's just, it's rough. I, I'm just, you know, I'm trying to root. I'm trying to hype up the, the, the team here, but. Yeah, maybe I don't even need to like study the rest of the cast. We can just talk about Hazama for the rest of the night. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, but I, yeah, like you're talking about, like the 2A having six frame start, being one of the fastest crouching normals. It's great on a bar eight, but also um, 
that's that's kind of like Hazama in general, right? I mean, Hotenjin, very fast startup as well. While not a real reversal, it can kind of be used as one like in certain gaps because it is so fast and it is a great combo starter as well. So even if Hazama has no real reversals outside of Exceed Excel, that's not really a huge problem. Yeah, and even uh, if you're really feeling uh, ambitious, the uh, in OD, I think Hotenjin is. Uh, Invuln at least till active, so you can get like a really good trade or just beat some stuff with a really fast like four frame uh, fatal counter super. <laughs> so, uh, while well, Hazma does have a meterless reversal option, he does have some still to work with. But uh, now <laughs> we got a Richter up on the bat here. Uh, we'll see how he's able to adapt to Hazma right Ten now. Five. Ben five. It's not little, looking good. It's early. It's early. Okay. It's 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 early, but it's <laughs> it's not a good look starting off early. Hold up. Okay. Richter. Hold up. Okay. Wait. Richter got something going. Yeah, we got some uh, explosions, some drive explosions coming in. Tries to go for a little reset or like some arrow key. Uh, still got Shigzama kind of facing the corner, but as I say that, that is not the case anymore. Now Richter, OD. Oh my God. Uh, I think it's on the dead actually. This is gonna be oh, yeah, the is. bang. This is the bang Twitter combo. Oh my oh, god! Drops it. I jinxed it. Okay, wait. No, we can kill right here. We definitely can. We have the meter yeah. available, and bang, just, one of the highest damaging characters in the cast when he has OD available. Yeah. I'm gonna say just, just super. Keep it easy. I like that active flow pop. Uh, OD super does a billion damage. Don't even need the double super there. And what I really find interesting about this matchup um, is that Bang is a very strong character in the air. Maybe not so much on the ground, but very strong in the air. And that's going to be very useful when it comes to keeping Shizama in check on those chain approaches. And also with the usage of Nails as well, being a, such a strong projectile. Oh no, we're giving Shizama a taste <laughs> of their own medicine! There's three air throws in a row! Yeah, we are seeing a very similar situation uh, in, the, in the previous sets, uh, you know. Uh, Richter maybe watching the stream, right? You know, gaining intel on Chicksama, how they like to play, and is taking full advantage of that while also BMing them in the process. This is going to do a lot of damage, going to bring Chicksama into the wall. Yeah, Richter, Richter, I almost wonder actually doing that chain of air for poor boss team, seeing what happened to poor Rider. Uh, a couple matches to go there, and Richter finally being the first one to fully close out a game here against Chigzama. Can we see one more? So <laughs> maybe we get some more Texas representation out here. I'm going back you know, to character select here. You know that final sequence was kind of crazy. Uh, <laughs> Richter, I don't know, I don't know how close, how closely you were watching, but Richter did like five 2Ds in a row. <laughs> did like five 2Ds in a row, and. <laughs> The thing about Bang's drive normals is that they're very, they're very high risk, high reward because while they do have great armor frames and provide extremely good counter hits, uh, counter hit starters, unfortunately they do come at the cost of very high whiff recovery. So um, in many of those situations, Chicksama could have blown up Richter for using those two Ds so, uh, so liberally. But uh, Chicksama still getting caught out in the end as Richter takes the first game here against Chick Zama. Uh, Richter already starting off a little bit stronger than Toledo, but you know, there's also a bit of that player knowledge where we've been seeing Chick Zama play for three sets already. So Richter probably is being a little more comfortable with how to play against this player. Yeah, and the bang mobility may be a little better at dealing with Hazama's like uh, chains, you know, the constant jumping back and stuff. Uh, and that bang offense, Richter, Richter, definitely not afraid to make like some hard call outs here. I gotta say, as a player, so uh, m you know, willing to just kind of go that uh, extra, extra mile there, just to just air grab or uh, go for like a really wild counter or a uh, guard point or anything. Oh, okay. All right, this now. is definitely looking like a chick Zama round if I've ever seen one. Yeah, One more combo close. after this. 
Oh, tries to go for a sneaky air throw. Not going to happen this time around. Richter and Chigzama play the same game. You can't catch them with their own tricks. But Chigzama was able to close out anyways with that sneaky chain at the very end. Catching a Richter and giving Chigzama a perfect to finish off that round. But Richter is doing very well against Chigzama. Like I said before, great air normals, great air control, and really smart usage of the nails as well to keep Chigzama in check. Like I said before, as these nails fill up the screen and prevent Chigzama from trying to use these chains so literally. Oh my god, another OD throw throw. We don't drop these this time, right? Yeah, it is very, it's very good to OD against Hazama, and Richter is choosing some very smart timings because 5B is very susceptible to being punished by OD, and so is throw, obviously, right? And Richter is taking full advantage of that! Maybe looking to close this one out. Chiksama holding on with a little bit of life and trying to make this one count. Has active flow, has a lot of meter in the tank, and has both chain stops available. They can make something happen if they want, but Richter able to jump up, hit Chiksama with the air to air. J A J A, such a great button as well. Probably killed Chiksama's grandmother because it's such a strong button. But uh, Richter already starting this next round off so. Yeah, that fatal almost been picked off, picked up of it too. I wouldn't have been ready for that, the, the fatal gun. But now, Shigzama getting some momentum back here. Did spend the burst. Oh my god, the OGs from Richter have been on point. We got another full seal combo here. Another 4k in the books. Goes for a little reset. Oh, gets the air throw. Drops it a little too close to the corner, I think, for that to work. It's crazy how much reward that Richter gets from these ODs because any good combo in OD will unlock every single seal for Richter which will buff his drive and normals and his damage overall, right? Uh, so it's really important that you uh, unlock all those seals as quickly as possible. Richter just moving across the screen, really making it hard to, for Chigzama to pin him down and just like that, one air-to-air -air confirm and Richter finally taking the first set for Boston. We finally got one on the board. Folks, we have a team match in the books. We we, we finally got something going. We finally got something going. It took it took three players already, but Richter holding it down, holding down the fort. And I guess we'll see who exactly we have coming up from Texas. We have four players remaining. So there is a good amount of players that they can pick in to bang. I want to assume maybe Javon, maybe Swirly Glasses, because they probably have the most experience playing against Bang. But Zen and Killer Kitty are also no slouch either. They should send in Zen, because I feel like this matchup would be insanely wild. <laughs> it would be. It would be. Because... Maybe not so much because Ragna is an insanely wild character, but Zen just an insanely wild player. I was going to say, like, like, the players, like, I can only imagine, like, the interactions we would have in that set. Yeah, I mean, like, <laughs> we love, we, we here in Texas love Zen, but we love just as, as much as we love Zen, we love uh, joking about him. Oh, <laughs> right? yes, they did it! I think, is that, is that Zen? Yeah, Zen. Oh, yeah, there he is. Absolute they were, they, X. <laughs> they were I love listening. <laughs> Thank you. Here we go. We got Zen. You know, uh, Zen actually played in the greatest Blaze Blue set of all time. Never forget. I, I, I can never forget. One, truly, one of the greatest Blaze Blue players of our time, of our generation. Oh no, we oh, got well, the first connection error of the day. It's inevitable on PC here. It was going to happen at some point, but it looks like Zen was kicked out of the room. We'll just wait for Zen to get right back into things. But Zen, Zen is such a wild player, let me tell you. Um, DPs all the time, just doesn't want to block at all, right? But somehow makes it work, somehow makes it work. Yeah, I know. I'm I'm ready to see the patented Zen 5D anti-air. Oh, oh, I'm ready for that too. <laughs> Especially on a character like Bang, like he's gonna be in there a lot. So uh, I expect at least five 5Ds hitting fatal. 
we'll, we'll see exactly how <laughs> that turns out. So I mean, I mean, just kidding. Sorry, I gotta be biased. Richter, Richter is gonna be ready for oh. every single one of them. Oh no, we have an, uh, a little bit of technical difficulties here between these two players. Yeah, I wonder if it's like the two players specifically, or Zen's connection maybe isn't holding up. Um, I. I don't know if they're going to still still stick with Zen or if we're going to switch to another player. But if Zen doesn't work out, that's really unfortunate because I really want to see Zen play. They're really just leading off with the two DFW players, I noticed. Um, uh, did we get someone to join the room? Yep, yeah, Zen's back. All right. Third right, time's the charm. Come Third on, time's yeah. the charm. Fingers crossed. Holding my breath right now. <laughs> character. Maybe, maybe it's the character thing. Maybe stop playing the Jubei thing. <laughs> yeah, bad pick. Pick a different theme, pick a- oh my god. <laughs> it's over. It's over. Zen unplugging from the round start. <laughs> okay, I think we're probably going to switch to a different player. Unfortunately, that we can't see Zen play coming up next, but we do have three other players that we can choose from. Swirly Glasses, Killer Kitty, and Javon. So, two S's and a nine. <laughs> pick your poison. Yeah, I know. We had a- uh two s's or a nine all of which i feel like bang doesn't really like dealing with um being a as like airborne character as he is those are three or well i guess two those are two incredibly uh hard characters to get away with like moving in the air they just have really big uh good air buttons to kind of like check your movement even on the ground like s6b or nine like 6c or any sort of variation of that. Yeah. You think of S, you think of 6B, you think JBB, right? Yup. <laughs> um, you can't stay in the air when S is there. You know, you got JDs as well if you want to put up a wall, keep them from approaching you. So there's a lot of tools that both of these characters have that can really shut down Bang's gameplay. But once again, like I said before, Bang has just a very strong layer one, a very strong sort of gimmicky offense that you have to know how to work around. And Texas doesn't really have a lot of experience playing against a character like that. So even if the characters may be strong going into Bang, it's a bit of that player knowledge, a bit of that game knowledge that they have to make up for. Currently routing the entire Texas power grid to his PC. Wait, he's... Oh, wait, that's not... <laughs> I saw... oh I'm, I'm reading a bit of chat here. Uh, I, think, I, think, I think we're actually going to try to give Zen one more shot. He is just restarting his PC here to see okay. if anything... You know, if that fixes the problem, I feel like, you know, when in doubt, turning it off and back on again fixes so many things in life. Yeah. And I hope it fixes this one because I, I don't want to be robbed this, uh, this, this, this matchup between players, not even characters necessarily, specifically the players. While we're waiting for Zen to uh, to boot up that PC, <laughs> we're, yeah. we're really sticking with the Zen. Really sticking with the Zen. We're not we're not switching off. You know, I I do respect that. I do respect that. But uh, yeah, you're like looking at the other players. Uh, we have Killer K, We have Swirly Glasses. We have Javon. So a lot of players to choose from. I really want to see Swirly Glasses or Javon play because it's also a bit of that Austin Air Assault versus Boston Blue beat. <laughs> um, <laughs> like kind of versus battle that I know that it's been in the books. Uh, I know specifically they've been talking about doing that at Boston Blue Beach episode when that comes around. But um, it'd be cool to see that kind of happen now. Give us a taste of what we can expect because Massachusetts team literally is just all Boston Blue Beach, right? But yeah. Texas, on the other hand, you know, it's we only have like two players from Austin. I mean, sure, we sometimes we get players to come from Houston or Dallas to Austin, but you know how big Texas is, right? It, yeah. <laughs> we have like the four major cities, and it's just all land in between. Like, there's nothing. It's like three hours drive each way. Um, it's 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 not a fun time trying to make it out to other cities to play in their tournaments. So we do only have sort of glasses and Javon representing Austin for that. But I would again love to see that happen and be biased. Prove to uh, pr prove once and for all that Austin Aerosol is superior to Boston Bluebeat. You know, we may not run online brackets, but we do run a very strong local brackets. Yeah, and we uh, we got some pretty nice locals too. If anyone happened to be watching is in the Boston area every Friday at Balance Patch, you can find a couple of us with some BB setups and 
some anime games and, and once a month every well, not every i guess once a month saturday um date kind of varies or which week is kind of varies um we have a bigger like a uh, completely run by us monthly for like much more anime games and much more focused around the anime games and we got like a whole stream and stuff so if you happen to be in the area you should come on in check it out if you're interested in any kind of current anime games and all that jazz um or even just tune in on the stream and like uh, support the stream because that can help a lot too yeah for sure but looks like do we have all our players in yet no not no not, richter not we got richter back in yeah, we got Richter. We got. We don't know where Zen is. Um, he's probably nuking his PC right now. <laughs> Hitting it with a hammer. Hitting it with a hammer. You know, giving it some uh, good old percussion therapy. Once Mag, you know, opening it up, opening up the case, blowing into it. That that <laughs> probably make it work. Is blowing the graphics card, maybe the RAM <laughs> slots. Blowing Check into the mouth. fan, just make sure there's no <laughs> dust in there. Picking up the router, blowing into the fan's router, maybe just for I good measure. Applying a little more thermal paste on the core. <laughs> All right. So yeah, Ragna versus Bang. We talked about it a bit before. Um, I, I feel like we've talked about everything when it comes to that matchup so far. And right now we're just waiting for this match to happen. But uh, some more interesting things that we could talk about with Bang is that what I one thing I really really haven't noticed yet is that Richter hasn't really used uh, Bang bumpers. That's that's one big thing I've noticed because yeah. when you think of Bang, you think like oh, it's bumpers because they provide very strong high low mix ups. But we haven't really seen any of that come out from him so far. It's really just very clean, neutral, very strong pressure and very strong layer one pressure. Like I said before where he's pretty quickly opening you up without having to do anything too, too crazy. Yeah, uh, I, I'm, it's a good point. I, I do think Richter likes to uh, show some bumper like pressure and Oki sometimes, but um, maybe just didn't feel like he needed it uh, against Shigzama, or maybe he was keeping it for that matchup kind of like more for having more nails to spam in neutral, kind of keep... Um, uh, you know, make Hazma have to deal with the, uh, you know, the, the three nails bumping around on the screen. But uh, in this matchup, maybe you might see it a little more. I feel like nails and neutral is still pretty strong, especially since Ragna has a harder time moving around them. But once you got him uh, locked down, it's like a little bit harder, I think, for him to escape. You know, no, no just like a back chain out. I feel like if you don't have a projectile invincible move, then nails in general are just very hard to deal with. But it looks like Zen's router was not nuked after all. And it is actually working this time. Hallelujah. Uh, we are getting into this set right now. Zen versus Richter going to be very aggressive. Going to be very rushed down. And it's going to be a lot of fun. Let's get right into it. What's the round start going to be? Zen to... Oh. Round start taunt? Was that actually a round start? What, what's going on? What's going on? Are, are we right, playing well, the game? We're playing the game. We're playing the game. <laughs> Richter wanted to play the game, so now we're playing the game. Here. Oh my god. <laughs> Very first overhead of the game hits. That's gotta be a good feeling. Though, 5B whiffing is definitely not a good feeling. These players kind of slugging it out. No knockdown. Just kind of taking some damage and rolling with it here. Okay. This should be enough to close that out. Yeah, all right. Put the meter just to make the combo a little easier. Guarantee the uh, the, the win there on the first round. Richter going up to one. Jumps over the 5D, gets that clean 5D punish. And that's what I was talking about earlier, where those drive moves are just such a, uh, such a high risk, high reward option to go out. Because we saw how Zen was so easily able to punish him for throwing out that, uh, throwing out that in neutral and it's completely worth it. Yeah, and Richter finding himself back mid-screen here, getting Zen with the overhead, doesn't confirm. He finds the man throw here, still pushing towards the corner. Zen spending the meter to kind of get out with that DPRC and getting an immediate confirm there off the gauntlet. Is this, this going is, to recover in time? Yeah, this is pretty late. Might have to use a, might have to jab. Yeah. Oh, he hits? Okay. Gonna get the seals, I like that. Still gets a lot of reward. Actually, how much is he dead? How much is he going to get off with this? He has a lot of meter. Reset? Okay, no. Bumpers up. 
Oh, oh and the God. yay! Not enough to kill. Both not like players good holding good. on. Richter trying to take this first game. And oh, Zen is trying to stay alive. Backing off. Doesn't want to commit too much. I I, I like that. The 5D! What, what did we talk about? What did Three, we talk about? You know... I know the special. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, now he's powered up. He figured it out. Okay, okay, Zen. Let's let's not. You know, I'm I'm sure it was a big dopamine rush to hit two five Bs like that. But let's not go for a third one, please. Uh, that 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 might not be the best idea. Ooh, that was the most confident wake up five A ever seen. Oh my drop. Chess asking, what is Zen cooking? This is the greatest Blaze Blue player of our generation. He played in the greatest Blaze Blue set of all time. Never forget. Don't disrespect him like that. Alright, Richter is fine. Up in the, arc spot. the offense, the umbrella Oki. Wait, we don't use bumpers, we use umbrella? But now Richter looking very low on the nails. Might not even matter though, because this combo could be enough to kill. No! Zen no. gets an air throw! How did wait, Richter uh, Richter's throw whiff, but Zen's hit? Mm, I don't know, man. Something smells fishy about that. Zen right now. He, maybe, maybe maybe when he said he was restarting his PC, he was actually just rewriting the game code. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Land in the 2D. Richter just. Well, it's like, I'm gonna cover every option you gotta deal with this drive. It feels like Richter only uses 2D. Like, that, that feels like his only drive normal that he uses, 2D it's, all the it's, time. It's like a pretty strong one, right? I mean, it's jump cancelable. It is a great one, because it is actually his best counter hit, uh, counter hit starter. That's funny. Also, awesome explosion, I assume. Oh, the whip 5D, but Richter doesn't punish. Zen, the only Ragna that's able to have 5D whip and be like, safe up. Oh my god. Throw off of what was, I think, just a failed movie. Yeah. Oh, dear. oh, the side swap. Oh, the fives. Oh, we got these? Not quite. Oh, <laughs> doesn't matter. Yeah, and that's... We got these really important to keep in mind that when Richter goes into OD, Bang gets access to an 8-way dash in the air. But the thing is, all of his movement becomes fatal counter. Uh, so you have to be very careful when using that movement, even if you can just fly all around the screen. Yeah. And I forget what, something about the 8-way dash, I think it's powered up with a certain seal. Oh my god. The safe jump. No, the drop! That could have been a big punish for Richter, but only gets just like a little bit of damage. Ooh, another drop, but all right, we got this one. No drops here. Gonna get a knockdown in the corner here with one more thing. Ooh, that was dirty. <laughs> Five the ante. As soon as Richter, you know, then just picked up. Have we seen a single 6A ante here? I don't think we have. Uh -uh. It's, it's all been 5D. I think it was one wow. 5A ante. <laughs> We don't need that super at the end, maybe. And this will recover a bit of life for Zen, so the next hit might not be able to kill Zen just quite there. Uh, Rector going to spend a burst as a last oh my God. option. We're just going to confirm straight to the super. That's going to kill Zen and bring us to the final round for That's game number two. Huge. Now Zen going into this third game here with me, but. Two bursts, basically even on burst. It's gonna be a while before either player sees their burst come back. Oh my god, that was the slowest fatal counter I happened. It was happening in slow motion. I forgot about the follow-up. <laughs> yeah, already was mashing that two-way, and no meat or anything. Oh, again? Another fatal counter. Not gonna yeah. build enough meter to make this kill. Doesn't have OD okay. or burst. It doesn't have quite half the resources on hand. So Zen is making a way with that chance at life. Swapping sides in the corner, recovering a bit of health, but not to any substantial amount. Down to the ground, has some mirror available to him, 2A, 2A, all of it whiffing, actually. Very smart usage of barrier, and also very smart usage of just staying there and blocking. And blocking Zen out, because Zen eventually is going to hang himself. Like that 5D. Why are we just 5 ding like that? That wasn't even going to hit. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh no! Oh, no. Wait. That's dead. 
I'm not jinxing it for boss. Okay, I'm not jinxing it for boss, and I'm like, I'm not saying if this combo's gonna drop or not. I'm not gonna say it's gonna kill, because that's what's gonna make it drop. Yeah, that was a, a super unfortunate drop from Zen, because Zen could have taken that game if that combo did go through. And Zen's process behind that was, you know, using that overdrive to lock out the burst from, uh, from Richter to make sure that combo killed. But something happened in between where the follow-up didn't quite convert properly and that does give Richter the win. Richter the MVP of Boston so far chewing through two of DFW's uh, own strongest and uh, moving on to the rest of the team. We still have three left. Swirly Glasses, Killer Kitty and Javon. As I said before, I want to I want to think that Javon will be the next one up unless they have Javon playing as the anchor for the team. I was gonna say next, uh, all that's left on the Teco side there is some. Here we got we got uh, two S's and a nine, so you know kind of rougher characters I think to deal with, uh, even especially as like Bang. So uh, I am interested to see who um, Javon. I would not be surprised maybe if Javon is the anchor, but we will see. Anything is happening. I'm glad they did bring in Zen for that set. That was that was incredibly entertaining. Not that the other sets haven't been, but uh, it, it was it was a, it was that right we, amount of wild that I was. We just had to, to, yeah. We just had to get Zen in at some point, right? Yeah, we couldn't go the stream without Zen. So, so we're still just mulling over who exactly we want to bring on. Oh, did I hear someone oh, join the room? That is definitely did. not a Javon. No, Who's but that? it is. It is that is Killer S. Kitty? That's that Killer is, Kitty. That is Killer Kitty. At least, to my knowledge, this was the only player I wasn't sure of who they played. Yeah, Killer Kitty, um, not really on anyone's radar actually. But Killer Kitty is one of the strongest players in the Texas scene, coming from Houston. Plays S, and like I said before, also has a new 13 and nine main, uh, nine uh, nine pocket. If they so wish to bring those play, uh, bring those characters out, but usually just mains the S. Killer Kitty actually can beat Javon in some cases, can beat Chixama in some cases, can beat <gasps> Swirly in some cases as well. So don't count out Killer Kitty just because you haven't seen them. They don't really play online that much. They don't really travel that much. Uh, so I would not blame you if you do not know who they are and how they play. All right, so the first S of two that Richter may have to go through here, depending on how this matchup, or the, how this match goes, I should say. Um, I know Richter, like they said, we we have someone who plays S as very strong, very, um, like a like very solid S, but they don't come around quite as much anymore. And I know Richter can't make it out as often as he'd like to sometimes too, so should be interesting to see how he approaches this matchup. I feel like it's gonna be a lot of this uh, projectiles. S can kind of play a bit lame, check uh, air movement options with her very good air-to-air -air buttons, like that. But Bang can uh, find a way in. He does have very good movement options. And just tiny one hit, and maybe Richter can get his like momentum going. Just have his game run. Yeah, one thing you notice about how Killer Kitty likes to use projectiles, Killer Kitty really likes to go to that double jump height and do A fireball, B fireball, and doesn't really like to use uh, B fireball all that much from that very low height. The classic S kind of game lane gameplay that you kind of think of when you think of S, where they spam out those five Bs from a very low height and use the install to uh to approach afterwards but maybe killer kitty is just scared of how richter is going to approach with bang and the fact that bang could probably just make it all the way over those uh b fireballs and make it not even matter at all so we're just going for a lot of these a fireballs to check those air dash attempts check those ground dash attempts but you got to keep in mind about the uh commitment it takes right because now you're in the air you can get counter hit on the way down and also the fact that there is some dead zones along with it as well Okay, here we go, find another hit, getting some seals, bringing Killer Kitty to the corner here. Guess the air-to-air, -air, unfortunately, brought back mid-screen instead of keeping in the corner, but still making it work. Kind of like one clean touch away here from taking this first set, but Killer Kitty not out of it yet. Really making the run here. Trying to confirm. Still gonna need about one more hit. 
Blocks oh the super, God. can't punish it. Still finds a hit regardless. Are we going to be able to kill right here? Is Victor going to spend that burst? No, we can't quite kill, but that will be enough. 5A into the instant overhead. That was a very committal option from Killer Kitty because Killer Kitty didn't really quite have the meter to uh, convert off of it, but you didn't really need to convert off of it when Killer Kitty was, uh, was in such a lead and Victor had so little life remaining when his overhead was enough to kill. Victor actually keeping the burst here, which I feel like is pretty good if you're fighting Bang, because the last thing you want to deal with is a Bang OD. So, Killer Kitty kind of in a really nice spot here now, pushing Richter towards the corner, and again, trying to, I don't know, Richter trying to challenge, or just not getting the reversal or something, and <laughs> dies for his troubles there. Yeah. Killer Kitty taking the first round here, or first uh, game, I should say. Yeah, that first game. I think that Super could have killed on its own, but I don't blame Killer Kitty for going for that OD just to make sure it definitely kills because OD does buff the damage of that Super in particular. Seb, you are insane. Letting Zen on the team is crazy. You can't let him see that. You can't. <laughs> that is a crazy comment to throw there in the chat. <laughs> but <laughs> anyways, uh, we're, we're talking about Killer Kitty versus Richter. 6B, and we're immediately going for that counter right there. Richter pushing Killer Kitty into the corner. Killer Kitty trying to escape, but his poison and Richter is just doing an effective job at chasing him down. Oh, you got to keep in mind about that crest. You got to keep in mind about that 6A overhead. And now you got to eat the crest mix up afterwards. Welcome to the S zone. What is it going to be? You succeed, Excel? Okay. I mean, he <laughs> got a little bit from the... Uh... Oh my god. That's, that's pretty big. He's gonna get the side swap and a lot of damage. Oh my god. Another drop though. Victor kinda from the couple confirms here. That could be huge. And I potentially closed out the game here. But uh, still, okay, still pushing into the corner here. Another drop confirmed, giving Killer Kitty another chance that at life. It, no, 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 not quite. Wasn't it. quite close enough to, in that corner to make sure that killed. 5 5A, 5A, going for some very safe compact pressure, and Richter trying to go for the 2D anti-air, but Killer Kitty just a little too high up and was given a free punish on the way down with that JC. Killer Kitty has a round against Richter. Will Killer, Killer Kitty actually take down Richter here? Getting a couple seals there. Off of a nice 2D confirm, no explosion though. So, had to keep it a bit short. Alright, and pushing toward, gets the air unblockable, I think 5B, drops the combo, gets a reset though, <laughs> drops another combo, <laughs> and gets the drive explosion, keeps it simple there, gets the super, okay, Richter staying alive, trying to get uh, a game on the board here for Boston, not going down without a fight. Going to the final round here, both players with burst on hand, with OD on hand. If they need it, that JB is going to trade, but that JC will not. These cross up JCs have been doing so much work for Killer Kitty right now, and these crests are going to be doing even more work. Has the insult active 5A, that's going to be very safe, but Richter can easily just go up high and continue with that overhead aerial. Yeah, slipping out the corner press there, getting out nice OD combo here, about 4k, all the seals on deck, and popping octave flow with the, uh, by ending the EA there, so, still in a pretty good spot, should get the burst back before the end of this round, and now has all the seals to work with, and still has a bunch of nails too, I'm surprised he hasn't kind of been using the game more neutral, but... You can tell right now that Rich is really struggling to work around how Killer Kitty likes to play this character. Lots of double jumps into double A fireballs and not really holding back so getting stuffed by them a lot and getting stuffed by the fact that Killer Kitty is falling down with these JCs a lot as well. Okay, tries to throw right there but Richter escaping just oh. narrowly. You get in the air, smart DP! Makes it, we couldn't get a punish but definitely was gonna die to that so had to do it. Richter now just gonna say one like chip away. Basically any JB is gonna take it. Uh gets clipped by a fireball instead, I think, but Killer Kitty knocking out Richter. Now putting us down to our final member on the that, Boston team. Yeah, that that DP bait, dude, that was so cool. That was so cool. And then 
there are multiple options that Killer Kitty could have done right there. They could have gone for that OD, right, for the invincibility, and they went for that DP instead. Because remember, you gotta keep in mind that Bang has a command grab in a super command grab in the air. So if you are in the air at all, you don't have OD, you don't have a DP, uh he gets a free super on you. And so using that DP right there for the invul frames to completely avoid it was super smart from Killer Kitty. And I thought that was going to land for a second. I didn't even think Killer <laughs> Kitty was ready to uh, to uh, counter that uh, command grab super at that moment. But looks like Killer Kitty was, and like you said before, bringing Team Massachusetts down to their final member. Spooky going to be holding it down as the anchor with the Arakune. And like you said before, also representing the Hakuman if they so wish to play that character. Though this is going to be really scary now because these are still first the twos. And you have th three of Texas' the strongest still in the game. Killer Kitty, Javon, and Sorelli Glasses. This is going to be a gauntlet if Spooky can beat all three. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, none of these characters. Oh, I guess, you know, there was only two. But neither character, not particularly, like, I don't think... Definitely give Arakune trouble. Um, so I wonder what Spooky's choice will be, because I feel like he's a lot more comfortable overall with Arakune. But like his Aquaman is like definitely real. Um, but I just don't know how he feels, or like what is what is the process on when to pull out the Aquaman is, or if he's even gonna. Maybe he's just gonna play Arakune for you know <laughs> the sake of playing Arakune in a, in this uh, team tournament. Um, so we'll see. As the man enters the room here. The General So? The. Dude. All can caps. I get an autograph? <laughs> That's him. The Blaze Blues equivalent of the real Tom Clancy. You eat his chicken all the time. <laughs> what's, what's the secret ingredient? <laughs> you, gotta, uh, you, gotta, you gotta ask him that. We're not up to giving secrets though. Ah, trade secrets. You know, you got, it's like the KFC 13 secret spices. <laughs> yeah, we got uh, NDAs non-competes all right spooky holding up the crowd here deciding not to ready up for the match probably getting a coaching lesson from Tweedo right now maybe you know you, you, boba. You, you got Tweedo in the background giving spooky every single bit of advice they can <laughs> give after watching that one killer kitty set i know Tweedo. i know Tweedo. Tweedo can so easily break down these players, how they tick, how they work, what habits you should be exploiting. And I think Killer Kitty does have some habits that Spooky can exploit. Specifically, like I said before, Killer Kitty with those double jumps into the double A fireballs, which if you hold back just a bit, you can take advantage of that because S has very limited mobility options right after, uh, very limited air actions right after using that, uh, right after using that sequence because you do have JC, you do have JB, but they're a lot easier to avoid than you think, and they can be counter hit in the air, like we saw before with that Richter set, where they were hitting that 2D in response and counter hitting, uh, counter hitting Killer Kitty cleanly. Twenty dollar chicken? Twenty dollar chicken? $20. Why are you selling your General So chicken for twenty bucks? That That's better, crazy. That better give me superpowers. I better be Arakune and Curse. <laughs> I want to be walking out that restaurant on you, man. Really backing up. Like I said before, Arcade does like to zone out, does want to fish for that one good hit so that they can go into Curse. And once Arcade goes into Curse, well, Arcade becomes probably the strongest character in the game. You got the bugs flying all around the screen. You can't seem to do anything, but it's all about getting to that point first. And right now, Spooky is slowly chipping away at that Curse meter. It is about a third of the way full, but Killer Kitty is on a huge lead right there that will be safe and you're trying to press right there 5a point of smoke hurst just ran out on that wake up spooky very good oh hold on i was gonna say spooky's very good about just building a little bit of curse and then using od to turn the tides immediately because of activating that bit of curse gauge uh, unfortunately dropped a combo there that could have got the ball rolling for him and killer kitty finding the uh the, the way to win the first round there. Uh, the Spooky, I'll have to get that burst back again, which could be pretty big. And if he gets a hit pretty early, Killer Kitty still has no burst, so Curse will be, like, imminent. But right now, Killer Kitty's doing really good. Keep the Spooky out. But 
and locked down yet. I'm gonna be doing so much work. That's crazy. Fireballs. <laughs> I'm seeing the fireballs auto catching the back dashes. The moment that Spooky wants to jump back, we just jump forward into JBB and it's all over. Spooky here stuck in the corner. No curse meter. Does have some mirror. Does have burst. But he's going to keep holding on to it. I'm surprised that Spooky really hasn't used OD yet because OD does put Arcune into that auto curse mode for like for a specific given amount of time. But Spooky was able to get that curse in the end. And like I said before, <laughs> Spooky becomes one of the strongest characters in the game. Arcune becomes one of the strongest characters in the game. What can you do? The unseeable mix-ups. You can't do anything. You can't press anything. Or you're going to be eating your entire health bar away. Killer Kitty lost that round in an instant. The moment that Spooky got that curse applied. Yeah, and uh, like Spooky is very good. I feel like at like gauging the curse resource, knowing where to kind of pick the reset points. So you know, instead of spending more gauge to do a longer combo, uh, chooses to reset to get more damage out of it entirely. But as I was explaining, that kind of just crumbled there and went down to a perfect there by Killer Kitty, going up. Uh, a game here and looking to kind of close out this uh, this team battle already I really like how Killer Kitty is not really giving uh, real, really giving Spooky any good amount of time to react to what S is trying to do because instead of going for options like 6A overhead, for example, instead of going for options like 214B overhead, we're instead going for instant overheads, which is making Spooky have to guess in these defensive interactions. And unfortunately, when you're that low on life, we've seen how far that can take you because they don't expect that overhead to come after that 5A. And if you guess wrong, that's going straight into a low and you're also going to be clipped regardless. So so being very smart just making you flip a coin in those instances and unfortunately s also has the meter to make that safe even if you do block that instant overhead and another instant overhead can come <laughs> can come afterwards yeah. as well so uh that was just really suffocating offense you're in the s zone crest all the way up in the corner killer kitty joining back into the room both players readying up yet again this could potentially be the final game of the night Let's hope that's not the case because Spooky is putting up a good fight. It's putting up a good fight. I mean, Spooky, maybe not getting huge leads, is able to make very strong comebacks like we saw with that previous round. Yeah, all he needs is one touch, maybe two, because people usually burst the first touch, understandably so. Like, even the best players in the world, when you ask them, how do you block Arcuna, they're like, I don't know. Yeah, you, you kind of at least got to get like a little lucky, maybe. Uh, do a bit of chicken blocking, but oh my god, 2B anti-air. I don't know why that button is so good of an anti-air for Harakune. Low profile is very quick. Um, and that's part of what makes it so effective, though it is a bit of a niche anti-air too. That's going to be first. Alright, party time. Earth, Bugs yeah. all over the screen. What's even going on? I don't know what side they hit on. I He's invincible now. Is doing I right now. He's cheating. Mashed on the Charge Crush Trigger. Okay, find a way out. Staying on. Uh, kind of a uphill battle. <laughs> and air 2B doesn't confirm though. Put back dash with the projectiles again. Making it under. Doesn't quite anti air. That's the slowest anti air in the game that you can just like safe jump it. Wow, what a confirm. Cross up. Oh, we're pressing. Trade. OD on the overhead. No, drops the combo. Drops the combo again. <laughs> oh, and okay. <laughs> the classic. Spooky loves that cover. He, I, he like, loves it. 6B is secretly incredibly good. <laughs> Jack, you think he's from Monster Hunter? <laughs> All right. Killer Kitty. Gotta keep the offense tight here. Doesn't wanna let Spooky out. Last thing you want is Arcuna to start getting this game plan going. Kind of Very simple. 5A confirmed. Ness isn't really a high damage character. It's just the fact that he, he can get so much, so many consistent openings on you, like we're seeing right here. Not a lot of huge damage combos. 
but a lot of combos. That is making Spooky crack, and Spooky is cracking in this round right now. In Dangerous State, we use a barrier a little bit too much, but we're going to get cursed right off of this single interaction. Killer Kitty stuck without burst. Going to get it soon. Are we going to spend it? Arcunia can easily make a lot of these loose bursts safe. Gonna go for the guard crush. What is even going on once again? Just invisible bugs flying all around the screen. Overhead low. What is it gonna be? Great flop sequence from Killer Kitty. Gonna spend the OD. Has exceeded cell available if they so need it. And we're gonna go for that overhead into the rapid cancel. Looks like we're trying to punish that overhead. But with the rapid cancel, that does make it safe and does make it plus. So Killer Kitty was able to counter it in return as Spooky is forced. Once again, to a potential final round situation as Killer Kitty is now on set point. Oh wow, what a mash. But two back off wasn't quite close enough, I think, to get the confirm we wanted. But this is, and this should be full curse. Does all, wasn't ready for the side swap, I think. Drops. Alright, got the Arcane Pressure going. Just building up a little bit of curse where he can. Alright. This should be it. Alright, yeah, here we go. Curse. Spooky. Uh, party time now we just need to kill kitty before he gets burst or curse runs out and doing well to stall it out i'm gonna Bro, get his burst back get the ja ready to confirm off of that as well i love it when you see that hit it's such a funny thing to confirm off of i do it all the time oh 6p trying to use it but it gets stuffed out the armor frame didn't last quite long enough Keeping Killer Kitty locked down in the corner regardless though. And it's going to be building up a lot of Curse Gage. Has Curse right now. Killer Kitty spang that burst. But Curse is still active. You still have to worry about it. And you still have to worry about those cross-ups. Because Spooky is able to take a game. Keeping Massachusetts alive. As now we have evened up 1-1. One, one, and we're immediately getting back into things. That was the quickest rematch I've seen tonight. <laughs> as Spooky wants to keep this momentum going. And Killer Kitty. Hetty wants to keep this win in the bucks for Texas. <laughs> the full screen cross of coming in clutch. Oh my god, what a round start. 6B, the 6B. Okay, he gets hit, but kind of gets out. JC coming down hard though. Choosing the OD gets, yeah, gets that little bit of curse. Kind of slows down the neutral in his favor now. Just fishing for like a reset because he wants to get another curse. Just needs that one more confirm. Now that burst off the table will be uh, very beneficial for him. One thing I find very interesting is that Spooky doesn't really use Curse Cloud that much. Um, Cloud can be really effective at making your opponent move how you want them around the screen, but we haven't really seen that as an option come out from Spooky yet so far. I mean, it is not needed right now because Spooky <laughs> is making it work without, but it is really interesting for the fact that uh, Spooky doesn't use it that often. Bugs are active, Curse is active, but it's going to be running out very soon. Can we kill with this combo? We have the meter for the super all the way up high. The big laser shooting Killer Kitty up to the heavens. Spooky is on a set point instead of Killer Kitty. Kitty, and now suddenly Spooky has the lead starting to slowly take down Texas maybe a burst a very bad burst uh, actually that was a very good that's like a point where you do burst because the bug still whiffs you get, get no okay. curse and you kind of have to oh, take right, it right 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 okay it, it does look bad on because it's like oh it whiffed what are you doing but it's like one of the good the few instances where whiffing the, or burst whiffing is still very good but now Killer Kitty in the blender here. Gotta block out this curse. Probably gonna survive it, but is gonna need to survive. Yeah, it's like another mix up. Uh, actually, I think just dead. Doesn't even need curse back. Oh my god, I mean, this is so doing so much damage. Man. What's going on? Okay. Well, I don't know. Deleted. If, I don't know if you quite needed to do OD super there, but. You know, just, just making a statement. Making a statement. Like, you know, the overkill is better than the drop. Yeah, for sure. No, we, right. had, we, we had seen OD combos drop before. Yeah. Mean, we're looking at you, Zen. <laughs> Spooky is staying alive here. Giving Boston more of a chance here. Making sure. Um, putting, that, putting that role that we kind of gave him as anchor to use. Making sure uh, everyone knows that this is going to be... This is like the final boss. This oh, isn't Swirly's be already in thing. the room. Wow. Swirly Instant had transmission no in time. Here. 
already readied up as well. This is the quickest I've ever seen. Uh, the quickest these players have gotten ready. Normally you have to wait a few minutes, but Swirly immediately ready. And Swirly representing the nine. One of the sole nines in the state of Texas. Along with Julio C. Rivera. I don't think we were able to get Julio though, because I know that Julio, a bit on the, you know, not really uh, practicing the game all too much. Um, Arguably a stronger nine than Swirly, but really focusing on games like Tekken, like Grand Blue. So uh, we weren't able to get Julio for tonight, but Swirly is the head TO of Austin Aerosol, the head TO of Texas in general, and a very strong nine. I know that Swirly actually talks about themselves as a first of two nine, <laughs> in the sense that they have a very strong layer one, layer two, layer three offense, but the longer the set goes on, the more trouble it becomes. Really yeah. spending this first. But Spooky, yeah, Spooky with a pretty strong lead here. Already getting down 50% on Swirly and the burst, too. Um, now kind of dealing with some nine shenanigans, but can back off. Actually, when I think about this matchup now, if Spooky can stay a little more full screen, it is like a, a matchup Arakune can definitely like zone nine because it's nine with no actual full screen options, especially without spell. So it's definitely like a you can make her try to approach you uh, matchup. For sure. Rock here in the stock. When is it going to oh. come as? It's really going to use it right there. Very smart point to use the rock as well. Doubling as an anterior, as a mix-up option as well. The clock is ticking down. You have to open up Swirly. And I really like what Spooky is doing right there. Using the OD, knowing that they have to get a hit on Swirly. So making sure that Swirly can't block forever was very smart. However, that does mean that Spooky is without any burst on the table, without any OD on the table going into this next round. And Swirly getting closer and closer to getting that burst filled up because of how early they spent it in that previous round. Right, Spooky with the early lead here in this round again. Kind of how the first round started, but Swirly did find a way to uh, bring that one back. Showing the burst, still in curse here though, getting chipped away a little bit more because of that burst, and already about to end up back in curse. There it is. No, Wasted no time. Yeah, Spooky in a very good spot here. Yeah, just kind of get chip away at nine right now. Doesn't even have to do anything. Swirly find the hit somehow and just. Ignoring the last couple bugs on the screen. Now trying to get his own offense going. Odd hand coming down. Great mash with the 5A. Jumping up. Electric ball Ooh. coming out. Trying to deny Arakune the air space. But does it matter? Yeah, 3C will be enough. Okay, tag Spooky here. Gets the clock back on him. Yes, really, really loves the clock. <laughs> He wants to make sure there's a ticking timer on you at all times. Now we're just going to block. You don't really have to do anything, right? Because now you're going to eat the full front of that damage counter hit. Great block on the Coons tonight. I love that Spooky is keeping mind, keeping check of the stocks that Swirly has available at any given moment. That is one of the key things to be looking out for when it comes to this matchup. Yeah, I'm not sure the reset there. Recognizing the combo wasn't going to hit. Now has Swirly in the vortex here. Has to make the most of his curse. Good burst by Swirly, honestly. Uh, you know, that combo was going to get cut short either way, but doesn't even want to deal with the scenario that Spooky is going to set up after. But the 2C, 2C RC, going to get full curse. Just kidding. I cursed Boston with that one. Does have... Never mind. I cursed Boston with that one too. He's going to say oh, has OD on deck, but media suspend it for burst. Oh my gosh, we're setting Spires down from above. A Swirly avoided every single one like it was bullet hell, like it was Toho, like it was playing the arcade cabinet. You got all these bullets just coming down, raining from above. Great evasion from Swirly in that final sequence to close off that first game. Swirly stays alive. Let me tell you, Swirly has a good amount of experience playing against Arakune. You, if you want to see a good Blaze Blue set, look up. Swirly glasses versus small fry at Seo Taku 2023. That that was some insane sets because actually Swirly made some insane comebacks in that set. And hopefully Spooky can make an insane comeback against Swirly because Swirly is one game up and starting off this round strong as uh, Spooky once again stuck without any curse right now. And Swirly is putting on the advantage, putting on the pressure, and Spooky. Unable to get out of this corner. 
Unable to block that overhead. And Morganite is in that stock for the low, for the harder blockable, for the unblockable maybe. And the range will keep you locked down forever. There's the unblockable coming out. And we're going to spend a very late burst. I'm not too sure how I feel about that one. That was, that was a spooky burst. Spooky, infamous in our scene for doing burst exactly like that. Um, but if anyone... I'm not, I just, I just shouldn't talk. <laughs> Alright, I'm not gonna talk, because I'm, I'm cursing Spooky. My voice is building a curse gauge on Spooky, and every time I'm about to say some positive stuff, Wait. he drops. So, I'm gonna say Spooky sucks. We hate Spooky. Look at that. And he closed out the game. What? I was talking about swirly comebacks, and I was like <laughs> saying, oh yeah, hopefully Spooky can make a comeback. Spooky made an insane comeback right there. Played it perfectly all the way to the end, and once you get into Curse, then Swirly, without any burst, just had to block it all the way through. And unfortunately, that's not something that most players can do. We're going to hit you, crack you open with that Coon tonight. Is this going to be a perfect? You have Super. Yeah, this will be a Laser. Insane behavior on all sides. Swirly's so like, nah, I'm, I'm done with this. I've had uh, it. Spooky. If anyone was going to win off a burst like that, it had to be Spooky. With no bias. But <laughs> that's just how it goes sometimes. Alright, Spooky. Yeah, almost had control. They're slowly bursting. Obviously, the first touch of Arakune, no one wants to deal with that. Teleporting back, teleporting forward, avoiding the spider. We're going to DP, get off of me, and there is a death clock ticking all the way down, though it wasn't able to hit because I believe that was in that, uh, it was, it was a bit of a weird interaction, but, uh, you were, aren't able to get hit in this season. The fastball low here, there we go, so we got mm -hmm. curse running now, swirly, gotta block it out, no burst, another reset, and one more, just for good measure. The guard crush. Okay. Okay, I see you, Spooky. Spooky, once again, keeping us alive. Tying it up. One, one. After the, after the craziest burst comeback I, I will probably see tonight. Wait a minute, the Arakune clutch hype? Wait, no, 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 no. I'm supposed to be, I'm supposed to be uh, rooting against Arakune. Uh, yeah, you, you, but I mean, we appreciate the support. Maybe at least we get to the final game, you know? <laughs> The Spooky, final set of players. You're pretty cool, but unfortunately, you're playing against you're playing against one of mine. So I le I'm legally obligated to hate you. It's like when you're it's like when you're at a tournament and you're watching your uh, friend play a set, and you're like, you you you'll be fine with them on any other means, but because they're playing against your friend, uh, you have to root against them. I I you know I understand. Good bait by Spooky there. Forces Swirly to burst. Now just needs to make that one touch magic happen. Almost got it there. Uh, and, and we got it. We got it. Okay. It's curse. party time. Hit him hit him with the schmicks. We do. Cross up. I don't know what side that was. DP. Try, no, try to DP? That's uh that's a that's counter. That's, yeah, that's not that's not how that works. You're dead. No first either. Goodbye. Super all the way up. Squirrely is finished. That did a lot. 5.5k. <laughs> I don't think any of the I don't think any of the characters that our players play can get that much damage very easily. It's actually yeah, I will say it is funny how hard I feel like nine and S nine have to work to get like past like three to four K sometimes. Yeah, it's, 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 it's not an easy that. task. <laughs> oh, Ooh. No curse engage to work with, though. I don't know. I mean, I'm just taking the L there, but... Okay, another perfect. Very mm -hmm. polarizing so far. Like, it feels actually, like... Yeah. Every time I see a perfect, I see Spooky come back. Yeah, exactly. And make it happen. Like, your objective is to not let Arcana get cursed at all. And oh, oh that's the curse. That's actually the one time this could matter a lot. Gets the curse, so the scramble kind of doesn't matter. Yeah, gets a nice pickup here. Yeah, and Swirly has no meter for Super. Has no DP available because they don't have any stocks on hand. Has no burst. 
Oh, had the. Oh, okay. I was going to say, Curse ran out a little short. Spooky spent the meter there to kind of get a better setup, but then it just <laughs> reset in the spider. So, robbing Swirly Blind there uh, <laughs> to win another game and keep Boston alive. That was the perfect set of circumstances that spooky could have asked for like i said no burst on hand because they just spent that burst it got baited they had swirly had no stocks so couldn't dp had no meter for super that was the worst situation that Swirly could have found himself in and unfortunately was not able to block it all and we f we find ourselves with the final players duking it out against each other the anchor versus anchor spooky and richter holding it down texas had a great start and we were joking about before where texas was going to beat them like one uh, like one player being all five players but it looks like that's not going to be the case we're actually pretty even so far because we're bringing it down to the final players like i said spooky versus javon javon coming out javon arguably the strongest player in this team so i'm interested to see how this one's going to go yeah spooky already having to work through one s can he do it again? Can I'll he say, do it again? <laughs> I'll say, Javon and Killer Kitty play very differently. Um, so you 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 can't treat Javon like he's Killer Kitty and vice versa. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh no! I, New I mean, thirteen. Uh, yeah, that's actually not a bad pick in this matchup. It actually isn't. Um, though the only problem is with picking New thirteen. Don't pick the cheap man. <laughs> what is this? Javon loves to do this. Javon, Javon loves to do this. He, he loves to suck the soul out of the people supporting him. He'll like go. He'll he'll be in a tournament setting. He'll be on the stream setup, and he'll be like hovering over different characters. And I'm like, I know you're gonna pick S. Stop hovering over Jubei. Stop hovering over New Thirteen. Just just stick with your main, please. Um, you know we have Texas's pride on the line. We don't need you to mess around. Yeah, here we. This, you know, Boston on on the verge of a, of a comeback from a rough start here, I gotta say. Going with the mash, doesn't confirm. A little bit of scrambly neutral starting out here. Spider snipe. Just running right into be confirmed, down to the ground, crest active. But it's not gonna really matter because we're just gonna go back to that full screen. And there it is, the JBB can't be in the air against S. Not like that. Curse being activated because of the OD. So that's gonna reset the curse meter. And unfortunately, we weren't able to get too much reward off of that. Now Spooky has to work all the way through that once again. Though I think we might be able to kill it here. The overdrive is going to really buff the damage of this combo. And the exceed excel at the end is going to cap that off nicely as Javon takes the first round in a very convincing fashion. But we've seen many rounds where players have beaten Spooky in a very convincing fashion. It's just when Spooky does get cursed where it becomes a real problem. <laughs> Oh, I mean, that's like the story of our Arjuna too, right? That's true. He's a, you know, I, I'll never forget one of, what one of my vocals has told me. Counterpoint, shout out to him. Uh, he, he tells me that Arjuna is a hater archetype. Like, most of the round, he struggles to do anything right, right? He, he can't zone, he can't rush down, he can't play mid range, right? Everyone just outclasses him. But the moment he gets cursed, then it's all over for you. Oh, and we're definitely striving towards this round. Gotta be careful with the cloud. Oh, that was a good snipe. The magic pixel and Spooky just dying with the burst there. I really like what Javon did right there. Notice that, uh, no, notice that Spooky was literally a pixel away from Curse. Saw that cloud right there. So instead of trying to approach the cloud, he just backdashed, waited for the cloud to come back to Arakune, and then chose to approach. Because if he just went a little bit forward, that would have given Spooky Curse. And then we've, we've seen what happens when Spooky gets Curse, right? Yeah. And we need to see that right now. Come on, Spooky. I know you got it in you. Get one touch, get the burst, get another touch, and win the game. You hear my counter? I think he's stealing all some warriors. Oh, you confirm off that? Oh my six. god. Drop the combo. Spider coming down from above, finishing the job. Getting a little full screen combo there, trying to. Dropping boots up. Jeez, Great spooky. blocks, honestly, but a lot of drops from Spooky as well, giving Javon many chances to stay alive. Tries to 2C anti-air, but doesn't quite reach. 
Oh, hold on, though. Oh, too many, one too many spiders. I sticky. We're gonna. <laughs> You're gonna get banned from Boston. We're exiling you. Lock. We need to lock in. Another spooky reverse two up. Bond's playing that burst early, hoping to get burst later in the round, hopefully. And not wanting to uh, get a curse from Spooky okay. early on, but this might be a curse. We'll see. Oh, yeah, we're not say, dropping in the sun. <laughs> it's it rolling the dice here, making sure Spooky doesn't drop the combo. Make Instant sure you block overhead. all this because uh, you do have. The thing is that S does have a DP, but we don't really have meter for Super, we don't have meter for RC, and we don't have burst on the table. So things are not looking their way once oh, again. Yeah. Yes. I think Devon is just dead. Do a lot. I think. I think. I right. would say if Spooky. I mean, all right, he got the reset after. But so I don't. He, he. I'm cursing really bad here or something. Spooky, always dropping some crucial confirms here. Thankfully, working out in the end. Oh, we're switching to new, aren't we? Are we switching? We just take in a second. I didn't think S was doing we, we bad. We might just be taking a second. Oh, we might get the new. <laughs> you see Javon go back to the character select. He's he is pondering the new. I I I uh I can uh tell you that much. Please don't swap. Yeah. Uh every single time he goes back to the character select and just ponders the characters. Uh, people are like, "Don't swap, don't swap. Stick with the S." Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But uh switching to New could be beneficial because you know you are a true zoner, so that does really shut down Arcoon in a lot of cases. But New doesn't really have the reversals needed to defend against the situation where Arcoon does get first. So sticking with the S is very smart, and it is the main strongest character. And we're seeing that DP come out already in full force. JD finds his mark, a great combo start because now we're going to go for this pretty, pretty cool mid screen combo. Cross up JD so we keep the corner. JD that's going to recover time. Wow. No, not quite, actually. What a mash. Getting no curse. Cause apparently, a curse started there. Uh, but it's okay. We got another hit. So now we got real curse. Now it's actual birdie time. <laughs> All right. I couldn't tell you the interaction that happened there, but good stuff, Spooky. <laughs> he's not dead, right? No, he's not. But it's not a good situation regardless. 6P counter hit. He thought that was going to kill, I think. And it did not. And now, lost. <laughs> he got this. He got this. That's my goat. Wow, the air to air immediately. Oh, I can't believe that trade. Uh, very much more beneficial for Javon because he was actually able to get a combo afterwards, surprisingly enough. Oh wow, 5B recovered in time and actually just mashing 5A in response. No exceed excel, no reversal coming out from a Spooky. And now this is looking like a Javon round, though Arcune escaping just narrowly, putting himself back into the corner, putting himself back into the corner once again. Backdash. 5A. And that's what we're gonna smoke by the aerial coming down. This is gonna be this is gonna be curse. And once again, oh no, we keep God. dropping those. Yeah, you have to, you have to. Do that one. Oh my God! Air, and we get the side swap. Okay, that's going to be curse now. Party time, Javon. Yeah, I was gonna say no burst coming back. Even I don't even know if that would matter because you know burst hit combos. God. Okay, Just literally at the very end. last game or final round, final game. All or nothing here. Oh, this is not a great start. Javon already spending that burst, and you don't want to be spending burst this early against Arakune when he's not in curse. Spooky can make a lot happen if he just finds one more hit or builds the curse passively, and this is that hit. Gets the curse rolling. Now has to make the most of this here. Can he kill Javon? Blocking one cross up. Blocks the overhead. Doesn't block against an overhead, but has burned enough curse. Where this will not kill. Is gonna need at least DPRC. one more curse or like one more hit in general. DPRC. I knew it. <laughs> oh, but the six B in response. It. The low. Spooky. You jobber. 
Oh. Press active. We got the fireballs I'm being tossed out. Javon. Very low. Oh, oh deep. This the no punish. punish. To 5C wins. <laughs> um. This what? is the command ah! grab, has the first, that one, that 5A was not enough to kill, OD being activated in Curse, but Javon is able to- How did he mash on Curse? Oh my oh. god, Spooky, you're trolling. He got the bug if you, I, Spooky deserves to lose this. The flies. Javon rushes in, the 2B hits! No, is this- The air throw, that will be enough! Javon. Spooky deserved, Spooky deserved to lose that. I, I- I I clocked out after the Mothra came out. My Heath Jobber Jobber. He's trolling everybody. Both of them are trolling, but Javon clutching that one out. A pixel of life remaining, and able to finish things off. What a team! set what a what a team event exhibition that we saw tonight really loved what i saw lots of top level play lots of shenanigans that we saw i'm not too sure if i'll explain some of them as top level play but um <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, was, it was wake up mothra it, uh yeah we we do those things around around the it, house it was it was play indeed uh, but and also like just really smart interactions at the very end right there I mean using that 6B because I knew that like the DPRC was coming out Spooky knew that DPRC was coming out and was ready for that 6B in the end afterwards But was able to really get any proper conversion off of that and Javon so many situations where he could have died right there but he just stayed alive <laughs> by the skin of his teeth i'm surprised that 5a wasn't enough to kill i mean he was literally at a pixel life i could barely see anything on his health bar remaining but if you enjoyed this exhibition so far and you want to be seeing more we're going to be running two more for the rest of the week for the rest of the burst limit games Guilty Gear XR, uh, sorry, not Guilty Gear XR, Guilty Gear Plus R. I was about to say Guilty Gear XR Plus R. I'm like, wait a minute. But uh, we got Guilty Gear Plus R exhibition match between Texas and North Carolina on Tuesday. So that will be tomorrow. And coming up on Wednesday, we have the Boston Blue Beat Houston versus DMV exhibition for Undernight in Birth 2. So be on the lookout for those. Uh, the... The fact that all three of these exhibitions have Texas was not intentional. It just happened to be that way. Uh, but it's going to be a very fun week, and I hope y'all stay tuned for that. Hello. Yo. Hello. I'm popping in here very randomly. Oh. oh <sighs> Boston, we Boston, we trolled. We trolled. We really did. We had it in the back. <laughs> we really could have done something with this. But instead, we took the W right in our hands and we looked at it and we said you know what you know what this we don't deserve this i don't want this we all looked at each other and we said you know what this isn't right we should gift the w to texas after they have gifted us like three sets on Richter's and Spookies alone. We looked at some I've never you ever watch the cheese falling turn you ever watch the cheese falling things in Europe? You ever watch those? You ever watch the people the way they stumble and fall? That's us today. That's us today. We fumbled to this degree. How we did this is beyond me. I don't I don't understand it. I looked at myself today. I said, I'm gonna cook Texas. I'm gonna wash them. They're nothing to me. I'm about to cook them. I looked at Shigzama dead in my eye in game, playing thousand pound butterfly from the what is it called? Neon white soundtrack. And then I fucking fumbled and Shigzama fucking quick rose two way mashed me three times. And I didn't do anything. I didn't do anything about it. I got I fumbled. This is beyond my capacity to understand how we're able to fumble to this degree. I'm not even gonna I don't even want to talk about spooky going for the fucking moth we can we can talk about this uh, we can talk about that another day that decision I don't know I don't know what's going on there saying do better you saying do better next time Javon I swear to God if I end up at Texas showdown if I fry you at I swear to God if I fry you at Texas showdown hey there's on site on registration area that is true that is true but I didn't even get it done I didn't get the job done I didn't even get the chance to play you that's the worst part about it all because I fumbled I fumbled so early on that that was impossible for me to do so. That possibility, that existence is just not there. And then we got this. You know, I thank you, Texas, for showing up. Thank you. You know, I appreciate that. You know, maybe come to Beach episode. I can't make it to freaking Texas showdown. 
because I just got other things. I didn't cook at Texas last year, so I believe I was never at Texas. I was never at Texas. That's the worst part about it. Go to, you know, this Boston, I guess, in August. Shout out Austin Aerosol. Shout out, shout out Texas, I guess. I got I to gotta say shout outs because I got fucking washed. <laughs> we got washed collectively. Maybe I should have went bullet. I don't know. I don't know anymore, boys. But, you know, thank you guys for commentating. I really appreciate that. But, man, you really, uh, you really gave it a good old show just to fumble. We just we just fumbled in all regards, and that was that was really crazy. So you know what, Texas, you take your win, you take your win, because I swear to God, the next time I play against a Texas player in a bracket, I am frying them. So help me God, I'm leaving. Bye. Have a good night. Take it easy. Oh, we well, there you go. You just heard from the voice above there. The WWE promotion. <laughs> Oh man. Oh. oh we are? Okay. Oh it, it's I it's I guess it's fair. We both can't have a speaker. Oh, we we, we gotta clip that one, post it to Twitter. I was dying. That was so good. Uh, that, 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 that was hilarious. Thanks once again, thanks for putting on a good show, Massachusetts. Thanks for putting on a good show, Texas, and yeah, shout outs to Austin Aerosol, shout outs to Boston Blue Beat for hosting us and shout outs to the World Serpent Championships that's also running. Uh, Chick Zama is the TO for that and that is the premier online Blaze Blue Central Fiction Major. I know that the NA tournament will be running on the weekend of May 13th so be on the lookout for that. We're going to be having a lot of strong players in attendance. Ice Cool Monarch, Play Guy, players that you know aren't in these two regions but are very strong nationwide so be on the lookout for that when it comes around and yeah we're just going to wait for chick Summit to join the room uh give us some words parting words before we uh end for tonight it seems thank you for sticking with this chat oh yeah um, and uh another shout out to uh be on the lookout for texas showdown if you saw what you if if you saw the texas team and you like what you saw uh be on the lookout for texas showdown because i can tell you that all of the players, with the exception of Swirly Glasses, will be in attendance at Blaze Blue Central Fiction for Texas Showdown. That will be on Friday, I believe, of that weekend. So be on the lookout for that, and that's going to be a very fun bracket. I will be commentating for that one, so um, I'll, I'll be there. I'll be there to root on the Texas folks and uh, see who comes out on top, who's the strongest of this group. <clears throat> Alright, yeah, so we're, we're trying to get the the Texas rep on the phone here. Oh. Oh. I think Chigzam is trying to join the comms VC, but, uh, you know, different servers and all that. Okay, there we go. Um, yeah, while well, we're getting that sorted out. Also... Be on the lookout for Beach episode. I know the Burst Limit season has ended. I know that was in preparation for the Beach Boston Blue Beat Beach episode regional. That's going to be happening on August 10th through 11th. It'll be having all the Massachusetts folks. And we're probably going to get some Texas folks out there as well. Where hopefully we can see some sets with Toledo versus any of them. And uh, cook Toledo in bracket instead. You know what I mean? Um... We're not going to let Toledo win just because he said he was going to. Yeah, it will hurt more in person. But it ain't going to happen again. Yeah, Toledo, Toledo came in there and gave his whole spiel there. I, I, next time, I, next time I you know, honestly, bracket. <laughs> honestly, he should have played Bula. I, I think he really should have played Bula. <laughs> I, I, I mean, you'll, you'll, I guess we'll see <laughs> if, he, if he does run into anyone else. Uh, who he's me sticking with. But um, God, that was that was yes. So much to end on there. Oh, hello. Hello, oh. gamers. I pick up my volume, boy. We kind of cooked you all like hardcore barbecue Texas style. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> Like I ran, I ran through three of your men. I ran through three men. <laughs> so it, me, the 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 somewhat semi-retired to here, 
off of, you know, running pretty much the whole weekend of tournaments. Still cook three of you guys in a row. Not our finest moment. <laughs> Attack is hard use. <laughs> but uh, thank you all, really, though, for hosting this. I had a lot of fun. <laughs> of course. Uh, thanks for being a part of it. Uh, this was a lot of fun. I'm glad it actually did manage to come down to, like, last game, last set here. For real, for real. Uh, not a full wash, though. I, you did pull a lot of weight there. I, 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 I had to give some of the guys, you know, a turn, you know? <laughs> like, we, I, I had to let them cook it for a bit. It was charity. Yeah, I had to let them cook. Like... I, I know, like, Texas isn't, like, that huge in, like, the BBC, but, you know, we're getting up there. We've been working hard to level up all our players and, like, promote growth with NRC. You know, like, Swirly's doing a lot of good work in Austin. We got people coming down from everywhere for Texas Showdown, all for BB. So, yeah, like, we not, may not be as big as some of y'all yet, but watch out. We're growing. All right, everyone... You gotta go out there and uh we gotta go out there and show Texas what we're made of. <laughs> we love to have you again. All right. Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, I'm so good. Um, a ton of fun. Yeah. Go Sorry, ahead. I didn't mean to interrupt. No, no, no you're good. Go ahead. I, I got nothing else to say. Uh this was a lot of fun. I'm glad I got to spectate it tonight. Glad it was not, <laughs> wasn't a total wash. And uh, shout out to Toito. That was, that was golden. Thank you for coming in. Bomb in the chat there. Yeah, and uh, be on the lookout for Tuesday and Wednesday where we will be running those Guilty Gear and uh, Guilty Gear and Under Night team exhibitions as well. But thank you to Ben Pai for holding down the comms with me. And thank you for the Texas and the Massachusetts crew for putting on some great games. I'm Salty Boy. You can find me at the Salt Shaker underscore or uh, any other social under Salty Boy, whether it be YouTube or Discord. Ben Pai, what about you? Uh, you can find me on Twitter. I don't do anything on it really. So uh, you'll just see me on comms, I'm sure, here and there. And uh, if anyone comes out to Boston, you might play me too. All right. Sounds good. Well, I hope everyone has a great night. And hopefully we'll see you in the future. Have a good one, y'all.